Welcome to this special edition of Mirror on the Metro. I'm Don Shelby, and I'm here today to talk to you about the term upcycling. Everyone knows all about recycling, but what about upcycling? You might say it's the action of giving devices a second life, electronic devices. Its mission is to keep electronics out of landfills. It's about funding important causes without having to write a check, and it nearly doubles the environmental impact of recycling. We're here to tell you about a group who's doing just that. Causes International has programs with upcycling solutions for turning e-waste, that's what we call it, into charitable giving. So we want to learn more about upcycling programs that are servicing many charitable and nonprofit organizations and others. Julie Shane is with us from Causes International, and this is your baby. This is something that you came up with, and it is a remarkable program. Can you tell me more about upcycling and the value on both ends? Because this does seem like a win-win situation. Thank you, Don. It's wonderful to be here today. In 2009, I became aware of a report that the United States disposed of 3.16 million tons of electronic devices, with less than 14% being properly recycled. And over 80% of that waste was being sent on shiploads every day overseas to developing countries such as Asia, Africa, and India. So it led me on a mission to see what this really meant. And the devastating effects that I found led me on a journey to see what we can do as a world to make a difference in the lives of others. So Causes International was founded as a philanthropic endeavor to let individuals within this country know about the awareness, action, and accountability of improper e-waste disposal and what the true effects are on the environment and in humanity. Now we're going to talk about the effects on the environment because that's important, but I want to step back for just a moment because as I said at the beginning, this is a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. First of all, your hope is that we can solve the problem of poisoning the environment in, in effect. And second, taking the revenue that can be gained by the return of these and recycling, reusing, and upcycling, if you will, uh, taking that money and giving it back to charities. Now, tell me a little right. bit about your track record of doing that. So what we do is that we partner with nonprofit, charitable, and driven causes around the globe, as well as for-profit organizations in support of their charitable giving goals, and provide them with custom turnkey upcycle programs, which allows them to go to their donors, their employees, all spheres of influence, to click a button, donate their electronics, receive free Federal Express shipping labels, and pick up anywhere within the United States at their convenience. Okay, now let's talk about those things. What mm -hmm. are those things that you can donate? So, well, a variety of things. If you look at consumer electronics. If you walk into any consumer store, a Target or a Best Buy, and look what they're currently selling, the older models of those items can be upcycled. And what happens and where we have a value-added service is that we happen to have processing centers, East Stewart certified processing centers in 41 countries across the globe, which we service 144 countries. And with that, we are able to place value on items that are deemed of no value in the United States secondary market but have value to somewhere around the world. And in turn, we take those devices, we d destruct all the data, 100% data destruction following Department of Def Defense and HIPAA compliance, and everything and all asset tags are removed. They are then put through a system where they're tracked by model, make, and serial number. A value is placed dependent on the secondary market worldwide. Values created, all the expenses are, in are covered by Causes International, funding is given back to the charities of choice. Give me an example of, uh, let's say, a cell phone. Somebody has a cell phone and uh, they've decided they want the newest model. They've got it in the drawer at home. Mm -hmm. um, somehow it's disposed of. Uh, maybe they believe that they've done that morally or some just throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they were to upcycle it, what value could that be to a charity? One phone. Sure. Anywhere from an old, antiquated flip phone that truly doesn't have secondary market value, we make sure that at least the scrap value goes back to the charity, all the way up to it could be well over $100. Scrap value is interesting to me because that, when we think of scrap value, we think of the uh, iron and steel mm -hmm. that can be recycled. But people uh, may not realize that in this technology that we're talking about, in the electronics and the current market, that there are precious metals mm -hmm. in there, there's lots of copper, 
Uh, and you can actually retain, you can grab that material and reuse that as, as well. Is that right? Well, we're hoping that happens so you can stop the mining that happens in certain parts of the world, like in the Congo, where they're mining the materials daily and horrible things are happening over there to the inhabitants. But we have clients that actually are from the Congo that we work with their foundations in order to support them from stopping the abuse that happens over there due to the mining. Now, you mentioned China as one example mm -hmm. of places where a lot of the e-waste from uh, Western countries ends up, and those aren't monitored in many cases. Correct. Uh, we have some pictures to show, and I, I'd like you to describe what we're seeing. Um, these were photographs taken of average people living mm -hmm. in uh, sub-poverty level uh, because it is those areas that are often ordered to be the center point for this kind of disposal. Tell me what we see here. Well, what you're going to find by several of these photos is you'll see pictures that will show volumes of electronics just sitting in people's backyards. Electronics being burned in the open elements with death all around and children playing right by there. You'll see a family living, sitting with her four children that's right outside of a burn center where 82% of the children tested have elevated levels of lead. And several children have over 5,000% safe levels of dioxins in their system. Another photo, you'll see a gentleman using pure nitric and hydrochloric acid to get the precious metals out of a small container. And they take that acid and they create an acid stream where children are cleaning their fish directly in that acid stream. There's other photos that you'll see people using the water for their personal use, animals drinking the polluted water. And then you think to yourself, well, you drink the animal's milk, you eat the animal's meat, where does the cycle end? So Causes International, by bringing awareness, action, and accountability, letting every person know that no matter what the device is that they have, whether it's that antiquated old flip phone or the latest and greatest that you just upgraded, whether it's video games or laptops, a laptop alone has 1,000 toxic components if it ends up in a landfill. There's a safe, responsible way to dispose of your devices Donated to a charity of your choice. Everybody has something that they're passionate about. It's a way to give back, have an environmental impact, and do a double dose of good worldwide. You talked about more than 140 different disposal sites around the world. How can we be assured as people watching this program, as people who donate to mm -hmm. an upcycling program uh, for a charity, how can we be assured that those 140 sites are not exactly like the ones you just showed us? Well, that's why we have 41 processing centers around the world. An example of this would be, and think of an antiquated um, pre-smartphone model, a 2005 or a 2006 chocolate, that if you try to sell it on the secondary market in the United States, there's no secondary market value. But we have facilities in Asia, in different parts of Africa, in all over the world. So we'll say that maybe in Malaysia, those families don't have access to telephones because there are no telephone lines and the only way they communicate is through cell phone. That is when truly somebody's trash here becomes somebody else's treasure on another part of the globe. And through our 41 processing centers with the East Stewart certified processing and, and recycling, we ensure those devices get into the hands of an actual person and not ending up in a pile in the heap in somebody's backyard to be burned of. One of the graphics that uh, I think will be interesting to people is the amount of revenue that can be realized. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, one set of statistics. It shows that the number of devices, let's say you collect for your charity uh, or your uh, business that is going to direct that money to uh, a charity operation or a charity arm of their own operation or a sports team, because you've had uh, relationships with the different sports teams and more to come, who uh, at big games invite people to bring mm -hmm. these recycling items and then direct that to a charitable organization. I'm looking at a number of just 2,500 devices, mm -hmm. whatever those are, LCDs, um, flip phones, uh, Game Boys, whatever that you have in the electronics field. Uh, that 50% of the flip phones, 50% of the f smartphones can uh, be realized at $13,125. Smartphones, four years or newer, $50,000 mm -hmm. can be realized. And the numbers, uh, of course, go up to so $10,000, it's $200,000. Mm -hmm. 
So it's an amazing amount of money that you can raise without writing a check. And you're Correct. doing yourself a service. You're getting rid of something that you uh, were going to throw away anyway, and maybe improperly. And then you are also doing something that is green. You're, you're doing it right. Yes, families, the average American family was through a consumer index study, says that the average family has over 34 of these devices sitting in their homes. Wow, 34. Yeah, Business Insider released something um, in February that there's $33 billion of unused cell phones just sitting in people's junk drawers across the country. So our goal is to make sure they don't end up in that trash bin under your desk. Because when you do get sick of the clutter and the mess, when you upgrade, and outgrow devices, you put them in a drawer or, or a closet or something of that nature. Once you get sick of the mess, if you're not consciously aware of the harm you're doing, people throw it in the trash. So this way we say don't throw it in the trash, turn it into treasure, donate it to a charity that you care about. Now, uh, how do you go about that? And, and for you to explain that, I'd like you to tell me some of the uh, stories that you have involved yourself in and the people that you have worked with, some of mm -hmm. the names of, of companies, corporations, sports teams, churches, schools, uh, because this is not uh, a fresh out of the box idea. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it in Minnesota right now, but you've been doing this for a while and you have a great track record. So can you talk about some of the people that you've helped? Surely. Um, one of our partners that we're very proud of is the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Jimmy Fund based out of Boston. Um, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute is a premier cancer research and treatment hospital worldwide that people come in from all over the world to get their treatments. And the Jimmy Fund is their fundraising arm. So we do a variety of programs with them, everything from a monthly drive at the hospital for employees, nurses, and doctors to be able to dispose of their personal devices in a responsible way, knowing that their data is safely and securely being destructed, and turning that money back into charitable giving to further cancer research and treatment. We also work with the Jimmy Fund in a variety of other ways. We do work with their donors directly. We're launching a program this September with um, they're expanding it to 500 corporations and schools that do a program that they're going to be upcycling to raise revenue to go towards team goals that will get all kinds of awards come kickoff day for the first day of the new Red Sox season in April. So we actually cater to each client that we serve. We listen to what their mission is, what their hopes are, how they communicate, how they get current funding, and we customize programs that encaptures all elements of importance to them, making it turnkey and simple that people can take an action to make a difference to the charity that they care about. So the Jimmy Fund is an organization that we're very proud to be partnered with. We also partner with organizations such as the Boy Scouts, um, all the way down to mom and pop, we had a little small nursery school that one of the children had a parent and 80 kids went to this school. Well, they ran over a brand new iPad. It was completely shattered and destroyed and they had an old phone. It, it came to almost $500 in charitable giving for something that had absolutely no use to that family. But we don't only look for items that, you know, that you can go online and do a consumer marketing company. We're a cause company. We're all about the heart. So if people want to be able to make a difference, to give back to their schools or their organizations or a nonprofit or a personal foundation, they can take upcycling to their spheres of outreach and have anyone within the 50 states support them without having to write that check. You're also going to save money. I have a personal experience of uh, having moved from one house to another and had to get rid of a lot of electronics and ended up taking it to a certified disposal site. And each item cost me 40 additional dollars mm -hmm. to dispose of. Uh, so you're doing us a service by finding a way that doesn't cost us anything to get rid of our electronics. At the same time, doing something that's beneficial for the environment and doing something that helps people in need. Yes, something else that we provide is on the corporate. We didn't discuss the corporate, we've only spoken about the consumer. So a donor from the Jimmy Fund, this made me think of this, called that her small organization upgraded their phone system. They had them slated for recycling, and it's an expense they would have to incur. A small organization, we were able to turn that into $1,000 of charitable giving. At, the turn, at a turnkey solution, they clicked the button, they got their shipping labels, they sent them off. They got rid of their recycling expense. 
They get to do charitable giving and have that as a tax deduction, and it was a feel good. Now that organization is taking it to their four other locations and wanting to do an initiative throughout the corporate entity. Something else that we do, I was just on the phone last week with a large organization that they, I looked at their recyclables, just the recyclables, not the other devices that they've already do things with that are taking care of sheltered women and domestic abuse. And what happened is they ended up recycling over 400,000 devices last year. What we're talking about now, don't recycle, upcycle. They'll nearly double their environmental impact and that for, those 400,000 dev devices, if they were all antiquated phones, they could be as much as a million five in charitable giving, and currently they were slated for recycling. So we work with companies and say, before you recycle, all you need to do is send us the make, model, and quantity, and within two business days, we give you the solution. And how does a person, because I hear the wheels turning in the audience here at <laughs> MCN6, and they're wondering, well, this is uh, wonderful. What do I do? How do I get involved in this uh, process, even if it's me individually or my church or my school or my mm -hmm. business? How do we get involved? You gave us uh, a, a brief summary of how you uh, are, are reached, how they uh, get the, um, the device to them, to you. Now, the question is, can you, can you be more specific to them? Uh, talk to the audience and tell them, here's what you do. Step one. Surely. All you would have to do is, well, MCN6 will have a contact information. They'll be hosted on their website as well. And you let us know that you're interested. We register your organization. And within two business days, you're ready to receive donations. When speaking of churches and schools, with programs like that, we do a variety of programs with churches across the country and other places of worship. It's as simple as repurposing a box. We are a green organization, so we like to repurpose as much as possible. You repurpose a box that could be from reams of paper. You ask your congregation to come in with the devices. You fill it up and as many shipping labels as you need, you print, and the next day FedEx comes and picks up at the church or the place of worship or your school. This is a way to further growth and initiatives within organizations, within schools, within all the budgetary cuts. We partner with municipalities. We can partner with the police departments, the school foundations. We do such a variety of organizations and programs that we can truly tailor to anybody that has a need. Tell me about who makes the selection of the charity that will receive the funds. Well, if you're a registered 501c3 or a non and you have nonprofit status, then you can be the recipient of those funds. If it's a corporation, many large corporations have their own foundation that they give out grants to different nonprofit organizations throughout the world. And if not, if it's a smaller corporation without their own foundation, they have dedicated drives that they like to do, whether it's for a local community initiative or they want to underwrite sponsorships. As long as it's going to the greater good, in our contract, it's slated in there that they let us know we are the, who the recipient of the funds are going to be, how they're going to be divided, and each program can go towards a different nonprofit. So something we do with corporations, they host many events, and they sponsor lots of programs. We can provide their employees. If you're running a marathon or a walk or whatever it may be, that employee can get a fundraising page that they can send out to their coworkers and to their friends and family all under the umbrella of the corporation. So if the corporation is having an expense to under, they use upcycling to underwrite the expense of the program. So in a more simplistic terms, if they want to give a $20,000 scholarship or a sponsorship or whatever it may be to a special program, they can do an employee engagement program, have all the employees upcycle, and upcycling can take place at work or in the convenience of their homes. The funding comes in every month with a full reconciliation, letting them know what fundraiser it fell under, and they could take a portion of that to underwrite the expense of the program, and the rest goes to supporting the cause that the program is dedicated for. Now, I have about, uh, I probably have 15 unused electronic items somewhere in my house. So I could uh, contact uh, MCN6 uh, if I wanted to give that money for uh, upgrading equipment and, and things like because this is a 501c3 uh, operation. Uh, or I could direct it by contacting you to the Washburn Center for Children, as an example, mm -hmm. and make that a, a charitable donation. 
Can individuals do that? One person with five phones, can they get in touch with you and make that donation? Absolutely. We've had that happen. There's children that do initiatives during, um, whether it's a bat mitzvah or a confirmation, whatever it may be, that they're doing a community service type program, which we do also host community service programs, that they want a young girl wanted for the animal shelter. All we needed was we got in touch with the animal shelter because we needed their EIN number because that's what's required. Sure. You know, so a W-9, the name and the address, and the check can get sent. What drove you to do this, Julie? What made you feel like this was the right thing to do? Because you left uh, an, an amazing career um, in uh, the financial field to begin this uh, program. What got you started? What made you feel that this was the right thing to do? Well, um, for my previous career, it allowed me the good fortune to make invest wise, wisely and give me the freedom to bring up my three children and be at home mom while having a consulting company on the side. My children are grown, they're in school, and I was really sitting back thinking about what, what are we going to do, how am I going to give back? And when I became, I was actually sitting on the beach with my children when I became aware of that original report with my husband and my children, and I said, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. The light bulb went off. The only difference is, is that my first career, I started at my parents' kitchen table, and this one I started at my own home's kitchen table. <laughs> and it started with a thought, and it grew, in my, it grew the vision, and I have a great team of support behind us, and we started creating the elements that were essential for success, which is making sure that the process is secure with the highest level of certifications worldwide, that when you recycle, you only recycle through East Stewart certified recycling partners. And then the charitable giving aspect would go back to the greater good, to take care of peoples and, and communities and individuals that have a drive to make a difference in the lives of others. And in turn, the double dose of good is that you're helping those kids overseas and those families, and you're doing a major, you are being incremental on the impact to the environment. Let's talk a, a, a few figures. I know you have a lot of these off of the top of your head, and uh, your website provides a lot of additional information on this, many, many links. But how big a problem is it that we're talking about in terms of the illicit disposal, mm -hmm. the, the wrong disposal, the, uh, the methods that people are using to get rid of this equipment, leaving it on the side of the road, putting it in landfills, throwing it in the garbage? Uh, how big a problem are we facing? And, and let's talk about this country. Well, if you think that in 2008, we produced 3.16 million tons, and it was just reported from the EPA this past June that in 2011, we're up to 3.41 million tons. It is reported from different sources that's between an 8 and 15 percent growth indefinitely of the, they call it the toxic tide of trash. And if we don't do something to stop it, when you're thinking about tons, that's 2,000, and there's 3.41 million. So the, the problem is bigger than anybody here could ever imagine. And we hide it, we don't see it, because in our own backyards you don't see things like this. Until you take the time to really delve in and look to see where the shiploads are going to, how they're being exported, the detrimental harm that's being done to humanity and the environment, it really does tug at your heartstring and say, okay, how can I make a difference and make it simple? We've tried to take every measure possible to make it so simple that how can people say no? There's also s some very uh, detailed information about the amount of energy required to make a new cell phone as opposed to upcycling a mm -hmm. cell phone that still is of value and can be used in some of these developing countries. Do you have that kind of information off the top of your head? Well, you know, I know the energy for the for the what could be saved on the environment on the carbon footprint yes. is that if you currently recycle a cell phone, it's you you if you recycle it, it saves 20 pounds of carbon emissions. But if you upcycle it, it change it, it saves 38.2 pounds of carbon emissions. So truly it nearly doubles the environmental impact for pounds of carbon emissions from being released into the environment just from upcycling one device. 
You have uh, a lot of future plans. I know that you have a uh, trip. I don't want to give away any proprietary information, but I know that one of your stops is uh, out in Portland, Oregon, because you're talking about some professional franchises beyond the Boston Red Sox. Maybe in the future, you're talking about the Minnesota Twins. We hope hmm. that's true. And some other individuals who have just tumbled to this uh, idea that you've come up with, who have said, this is exactly what we want to be a part of. Well, yes. I mean, we haven't signed a contract, right. so we don't like to say, but we are in talks with several organizations um, that has spheres of influence that can take, make a true impact. An organization that we're um, partnering with is the National Boy Scouts of America. And the way that we talk about the National Boy Scouts of America, these kids, you have over close to 4.1 million members on a national scale and close to 50 million alumni that they can be in contact with. Never mind sponsors and programs of that nature. We're talking about a program and it's one act of green just within their own homes. The environmental impact with the carbon footprint along with the funding to further the programs and the growth of the Boy Scouts of America is in the millions. Give me the, the best um, memory you have of success from this program. <sighs> okay, there's many. I'll have to think about that for a moment. I think the, um, the greatest gift that I feel comes back to us over and over is when you see that you made an impact on somebody else's life. And when we do these programs with young children and they feel so lucky to be a part of it, it really touches your heart because we match up a program called Kids Helping Kids Program and we give them an educational platform, whether it's a nursery school, going through the comfort of their homes and doing a scavenger hunt, all the way to collegiate, whether it's the Boy Scouts of America, whether it's the fans at a Red Sox game, whatever it may be, when they come over and say, I have a lot of that, I can do that, I can do that, it's a gift that we give to ourselves because then they take an action and we know they're the influencers over what happens in the next generation to come. We're just about out of time, but I don't want to miss this opportunity for you to have a personal conversation with the people at home. Tell them why they ought to be involved in upcycling. All of us have something that we're passionate about. Whether it's a place of business that you work that does charitable giving, your child's school, a nonprofit, a charity that has touched your heart in one way or another, upcycling is an easy solution to create funding, to give back, and doing it all at no cost to the organization or its donors. You have me sold. <laughs> Thanks, Julie, for being here. Thanks for coming to Minnesota to tell your story. Thank you so much, Don, for having me. It's our pleasure. Okay. Thanks for watching this special edition of Mirror on the Metro. Causes International is helping many nonprofit businesses, public agencies, and others by receiving donations from the upcycling programs. And you can visit MCN6's website at www.mcn6.org to find out how you can donate electronic devices, or you can call my friend Gay Jacobson at 612-339-3221. I'm Don Shelby.